the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. It's calling us deeper. Deeper, deeper. That's the secret in the spirit. You first will go deeper, deeper, deeper. Then you can go higher, higher. Higher. the bible says listen it says the remnant of the house of jacob they shall bear root downwards and then they will bear fruit upwards there is no upward movement until your root is solid grounded established in truth this is what we seek to do every time we gather if you don't have a seat stand if you cannot sit find the ground do not allow anything limit you there is a curriculum of the spirit faithfully see that will endure to the end because the bible says to that one they will be given a crown and a white stone no man who worried will entangle himself with the things of civilians hallelujah Praise the Lord. God bless you, worship team. Listen. There is an end to every spiritual pursuit. This is not a vain This is not a vain seeking of something that is ambiguous. We are not confused about what we are pressing into. Are you listening to me? We are not confused. Week after week, the Bible says, He that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life eternal. But he that soweth unto the flesh, he will reap corruption. We are not just chasing after shadows. No. No. There is a definiteness guaranteed by the integrity of the word that we will arrive there are you listening to me so every time you have the opportunity to show up in his presence realize that this is your demonstration of your willingness to proceed in this spiritual journey for there is an end to all things let me tell you something the bible says if the cloud be full of rain if the cloud be full there is an incense of sacrifice that is being raised week after week. You may look like a fool doing it, but there is the God who sits and the Bible says righteousness and justice. Ah, God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. Whatsoever any man sows, that will he reap. There is a seed you are sowing and there is a God who sits upon a throne backed up by justice. He will see to it according to Jeremiah 1.12. The Bible says he's alert and active, watching over his word to bring it to pass. And so your success in life does not become a mistake. It is men who do not understand the part of the spirit that criticize great men. Because they do not know that it is on, upon the bowels of much traveling and alignment in the spirit that you command power in the heavens. It's not a gift. It's a reward. Take over, take over, we 
have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of our Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end. Just the voices. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I made a vow with my life and with destiny that I will not stop until my destiny looks like the visions that the Lord has shown me. This is why I don't get distracted with the frivolities of men. The journey is still far. Regardless of what it is that men say, I don't have time to waste my time. There is an urgency upon my spirit. Many of us just take one or two steps and then you stop there. Uh -uh. You must contend in the spirit. Every time God wants to challenge me, he, he, he reintroduces to me the visions of the Lord that he showed me. And it puts a fire upon my bones. When you come to the end of yourself, then you are ready to begin a journey with him. This is not a special number. The songs that we sing are deep songs of the spirit. They are an attempt to be able to articulate and communicate certain things. We have come to the end of us. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of us. Hallelujah. Listen. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. You won't go to hell. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. When it comes to the walk with God, the experiential work with the Holy Spirit in the kingdom. Listen. No man cajoles you. It's sad that the body of Christ is full of pranks and tricks and cajoling. Great men are not made that way. For the birth of anything valuable is painful. It is as soon as Zion travails that she puts forth a son. Many of us are used to all kinds of pampering. No! 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 When it comes to the realm of greatness, you must gain structure and dexterity in the spirit. It will cost you your time. It will cost you sacrifice. You will make decisions that are uncommon. But at the end of that, there will be a crown. Hallelujah. There must first be a desire in your heart. To leave the realm where you are. I don't compare the standard I want to become with many people in our generation because it's an apology. When I read about the fathers of old, I, I, I am challenged. What did these ancient people see? What realm did they touch that made them like immortals upon the earth? Hebrews begins to leave them. It says, through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They shut the mouths of lions. There is a realm that is deficient in the body of Christ. We have lost touch with reality in the spirit. There is a call for us to return and contend for the things that are genuine, lasting and potent. Where the Holy Spirit does not become a strange personality. This is why we call this koinonia. This is a place where we expose you to the reality of a personality, not a phenomenon. A personality that is able to help you and make your life become a wonder. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Always our cry. Holy Ghost. 
Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place, call his name Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Just the voices one more time. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place. this become the anthem of your life the things that men die chasing after will be given unto you at a platter of gold it will be the reward of your consistency with the spirit hallelujah if your heart is determined to pursue him to seek him you will get power you will get fame increase influence he said one thing is needful you are running around chasing after many things one thing is needful one thing is needful this is the first message to many of us tonight hallelujah many people are looking for the secret of many things success power anointing grace increase but let me tell you something in my little journey i have found out that the holy spirit is called the fountain of life he is the universal set consisting of everything that you will want i didn't start my journey with any hidden agenda i've said it again and again i was not looking for anointing i was not looking for power I was not looking for crowd i was not looking for recognition my heart was panting after the reality of the kingdom experience because i was dissatisfied with the status quo and the things that men have camped around something in my spirit told me this was not it and as i began to contend and get deeper into this journey that I did not know the mission was follow me God did not give me any assurance on the way hmm. God did not promise me a crowd God did not promise me I'll be wearing suit one day but he promised me his presence and he kept that promise I'm not obliged to accuse God for anything because he kept what he said he will give me his presence his glorious presence when you have that presence you command every other thing i mean it you will literally command every other thing this is the master key the glorious presence of god it should not just be a church thing it must become a reality and the lord walking with them and as a result confirming the word not their word the word with signs following and the lord moses said do not let us we have no ministry outside his presence do not let us depart oh but if he will go with me i will go anywhere and there is one guarantee exploit unlimited satan notwithstanding because of his divine presence He's the Holy Ghost. Don't join me. 
You're the Holy Ghost. I call you the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Breathe on us tonight. Breathe on us. You are the Holy Ghost. The presence of the living God. You are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Change our lives now. Change our lives now. Have your way. Have your way. Just pray one prayer and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. From the depths of your heart, I surrender all. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy is the Lamb, faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lamb. Faithful, faithful is the Lamb, awesome, awesome is the Lamb, awesome, awesome, awesome Hallelujah. is the Lamb. Spirit of the living God. We are gathered tonight in this place. It will never become a traditional display of religion. Nor will it be the vain quest of men to seek relevance. But it will remain the tabernacle of glory. Where you are building and raising and training great people. We dissociate ourselves from the frivolities and the vain quest to seek significance after or outside your presence for in thee is the fountain of life and in thy light do we see i praise you and bless you tonight we sit at the feet of the great rabbi teach us the mysteries of the kingdom that will prepare us let us eat the bread of the spirit for the journey is far strengthen us O god that we will bear root and be stable in our Christian experience. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. Please hug three or four people. Tell them God bless you and be seated. Hallelujah. hallelujah I want to thank you for coming everyone hallelujah it's always a privilege I apologize for all the people who are having to stand I assure you this is not a waste not when you are doing it for his majesty may the Lord cause the nations to stand before you because they will stand in awe Hallelujah. I rather stand before God than to stand begging and clamoring for the attention of men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. It is always a privilege, always a privilege to 
bring the word of the Lord to us. I have never considered it as a right. I didn't earn it. This is an election of grace. Before I was born, God has been blessing and raising people. And if He tarries after we are gone, there will still be the impact of the Spirit. Look, sit down anywhere you find. If you can sit on stage and you won't feel embarrassed, go ahead. We're excellent people and we're organized. But not too organized to rob people of entering their glorious destiny. Hallelujah. There is a longing that only you can feel. A raging tempest that only you can steal. My heart is thirsty, Lord, to know you as I'm known. Drink from the river that flows before your throne. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Would you take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before? I just want to love you more and more. How I long. That's my desire. That's my desire all the time. My desire is not to be a great preacher. I'm telling you. Being a great preacher does not heal the sick. It doesn't cast out devils. It doesn't change destinies. I desire to know Him. I desire to know Him with all my heart. There is an urgency in my spirit that is not bound to this realm nor anything this realm can offer. It is my singular pursuit. As far as I'm concerned, I have not begun ministry yet. This is only the preparation for an extraordinary life. I want to challenge you even as we start. Your desire for God must be genuine. Otherwise, you will be tired later on. Hallelujah. It's good to receive from God. It's good to receive. That's why we have miracle services. Where we trust the Spirit of God to release great things into the lives of men. But let me tell you, if your circumference of your pursuit for God is centered around the things you will get, your Christian experience will be poor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Tonight we'll be considering something. Please bring out your notebooks, whatever you have to write. I want to teach tonight on the walking knowledge of the word. The walking knowledge of the word. It's the Greek word epignosis. The working knowledge of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John 8. How many of you believe God is here? Those of us who are pastors and men of God or will be called into ministry, listen, let me give you a frank advice. If you have the best stage in the world and you have the best of media people, you wear the best of suits and you lack the presence of God, you are wasting God's time and the time of His people. 
hallelujah all of those things are only relevant if you can sustain the presence of God Shalom Shalom Jerusalem Peace be to you When Messiah comes to take us home May his praise be found in you. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Lord, we will give you no rest until we become the Zion of our Lord experientially. John 8 I rather not have a ministry and have his presence I rather be considered a failure and have his presence when you have his presence you have everything learn this when you have his presence you will have every other thing. I cannot burn this enough into your spirit. Everybody listen. When you have his presence, you have everything. The presence of God is the end of every argument. The end of every contention. Let your presence never depart from this house, O oh God. Let it please you, Majesty, to make this place a tabernacle of your presence. You called it Koinonia. This is a place where we meet. Let this be the gates of heaven. Let nothing in this place turn into religion. Let it not be the simple quest of men to make meaning out of their lives. Lord, that you will find a place that you can tabernacle and build men and train men. Holy Spirit, you will find full expression in the midst of your people. Your presence. We covet greater weights of your presence greater than any revelation hmm. greater than any anointing the presence of the living God presence of the living God Lord we honestly desire you this is a true commitment from our hearts. On behalf of your people, Lord, we express a desperation. We want to see all of you manifest in our lives. We know that there is an extraordinary life destined for us in Christ. And we labor in the spirit to apprehend that which has been kept aforetime for us. So help us, O oh God, tonight as we advance in this sincere quest. It's a preparation for a fire and a revival that the earth has not seen. You brought everyone here by your predeterminate counsel. Teach us, great rabbi, 
we sit before your holy presence break the bread of the spirit and cause understanding to be crystallized upon us may we not be men void of spiritual understanding strengthen our hearts out of the abundance of the deposit of spiritual things that you will put in us give us grace to be able to read the writings on the wall that we may stand among the great and command power in this realm we thank you because it is your great desire to do this we yield ourselves to you oh great one breathe upon us tonight in the name of jesus hallelujah john 8 verse 32 The working knowledge of the word. This is what I want to teach on tonight. Hallelujah. And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know. Not that is available. The truth that you have, that you know. Will make you free. The word know the truth there is the Greek word epigenosko. Is the complete and accurate knowledge of anything that brings the person who is knowing and what is known into oneness. Hallelujah. And you shall know there will be an intercourse between you and the truth. And as a result... You will experience liberty. You will experience freedom. The limitations that and the encumbrances of life that keep you at the lower echelons of life will give room and you will celebrate freedom. It says you shall know the truth. Not that you will hear about the truth. You will know. It's one thing to hear it's another thing to know. Hallelujah. This realm is governed by knowledge. Write it. This realm is governed by knowledge. The degree of light that you have. Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, Arise. Comma, shine. It says, for your light is come. Arise, shine. Not because you want to arise. Not because you, this is not an issue of desire here. It is the byproduct of the coming of your light. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the prophecy, verse 2. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and deep, gross darkness. Darkness symbolizes confusion, ignorance. Gross darkness upon the people. It says, But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3, as a result, it says, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles, unbelievers will be compelled by your light, the knowledge that you have. And even kings will come to the brightness of your rising. This realm, listen, listen, please. This realm is governed by knowledge. This realm is not governed by miracles. It's not governed by guesswork. As good as miracles are, the earth is not governed by miracles. A miracle is only necessary because there is a violation of a principle. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet began to lament speaking under the inspiration of the holy spirit he says my people are destroyed 
My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Listen, it says because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being a priest. That means it takes knowledge. Everybody say light. Everybody say light. This realm is governed by knowledge. That means the limitation that you have in life is the limitation of knowledge. For you will only arise to the degree to which your light comes. I'm convinced that where I am in life and the limitations in my life are the limitations of light and so the remedy is to contend the bible says he made many lights all of those many lights have their dimensions but he made two great lights two great lights and at the emergence of those lights they silenced all those little lights he says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night i've said it and i've said it again and again that if that light comes, you will rule both in the day and in the night. Hmm. Hallelujah. So where you are today, seated looking at me, is where your realm of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things have kept you. I am convinced that no enemy and no devil can keep a man when his knowledge has lifted him higher. There are two ways to bind Satan. One is by prayer. The other is by knowledge. Your knowledge can make you live as if Satan does not exist. They know not, the Bible says, neither do they understand. They grow up in darkness. And so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are gods? And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Psalm 82. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Are you there? Okay, Psalm 82. Can you give us Psalm 82? Let's just look at it from the Amplified. It's possible. Everybody say after me, I go for knowledge. I refuse to remain where I am. I go for knowledge. If you will believe this, this is a very powerful revelation. That where you are today is because of the limitation of your knowledge. From verse 4. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rescue them out of the hands of the wicked. Verse 5. The magistrates and judges know not. This is talking about you. You will understand that from the context of verse 1. It says, Neither will they understand. And as a result, they walk on it in darkness. What is the darkness there? Of complacent satisfaction. As a result, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Verse 6. This is God speaking to the great. He says, I have said ye are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. The last verse. But you shall die as mere men and fall as one of these princes. Everybody say knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Working knowledge. Not theoretical knowledge. Epignosis talks of the working knowledge. Knowledge that can be applicable to bring you results. Many of us have all kinds of religious junks and theory that cannot stand the test of time. So many, listen, we, we live in a generation of rema and knowledge. 
There are people who can quote Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. We have a lot of theoretical knowledge about different aspects of the Christian faith. But none of this knowledge is potent enough to deliver to us the reality of what the word says will be. He says, ye search the scripture, for in them ye think ye will find life and ye will not come to me. He said, the letter killeth, but the spirit quickeneth. That should be Psalms, I mean, John 6, 63, I think. John 6, 63. The words that I speak unto you. He says, it is the spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatsoever. The words, the truths. That's why the Bible says, ye shall know the word. Ye shall know the truth. I have been speaking to you as spirit and life. Everybody say, I contend for knowledge. The walking knowledge of the truth. I began to edit my life some years ago. And I found out that I had many useless, though spiritual knowledge. Useless, though spiritual. Because I used it in the face of danger and it was helpless. So I knew that this was nonsense. If it is the word of God, it should carry in it the life of God to deliver results. Is that correct? And so I began, I made a resolution that I was not going to waste my time junking myself with religious knowledge that is not able to produce results in my life. There are people who have heaps of books in their houses. They've read everything. But knowledge that is vain. Let me show you something very powerful. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, that should be chapter 12, from verse 10. Are you getting blessed? Please take seriously what I'm sharing. I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that everyone will receive. Ecclesiastes 12. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. And that which was written was upright and verse 11. It says, The words of the wise are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12. Listen. He says, and further, by this my son be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Now this is not saying you should not study. You understand the context? Junking yourself with all kinds of knowledge that only makes you feel that you are making progress, but you are not making any progress. Hallelujah. They are a weariness to the flesh. 13. He said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You can stop there. Could it be that the knowledge you have been having is only puffing you up but is not delivering results? That means there is need to convert your theoretical spiritual knowledge into the walking knowledge. The walking knowledge. I learned this from Bishop David Oyedeko. Remains my lifelong mentor in the area of wisdom. A man who has contacted the spirit of wisdom. Knowledge that can be applied If you study glass technology and this glass is broken and you carry it and throw it away, of what good is your knowledge? Are you listening to me? Walking knowledge. Practical, applicable knowledge. There are many people who know almost all the scriptures and demons come and oppress them and they are helpless. It means your knowledge is not applicable. It's not working. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something? And I want to challenge you tonight and expose you to the principles that can help your knowledge become experiential. You can know that what you know can work for you. Listen, can I tell you something? There is a waiting process in faith 
But the waiting time is not forever. The end of faith is a performance. This is what validates the waiting time. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to talk about is the supremacy of God's word. Everybody write the supremacy of God's word. The supremacy of God's word. God's word in this realm is the final authority over the affairs of men. God's word is the final authority. Final authority when it comes to the affairs of men. Your experiences notwithstanding, your experiences do not have the capacity to validate the word of God. The word of God is that standard, is that benchmark that all other things revolve around. That means when your Christian experience is not tilting you towards the reality of the word of God, you can check and know that something is wrong with your life. There are many ministries that build their churches and their ministries around spiritual experiences. Never build your Christian life just around visions and dreams. You will get into a lot of demonic error. That's the problem with a lot of people. They are always seeing something every day and they never consult the word. And so it leads them into blind error. They are like a pendulum swinging from left to right. Can I tell you something? Those who will last in these days are men who give priority to the word of God. Not men who have visions and dreams. I believe in spiritual experiences. But the realm of the spirit is such a complex realm. You must only look at it from the realm of God's word to pick out that which is relevant to your destiny. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are seeing visions and someone is an ardent student of the word, that student feels very inferior. He feels me, I'm not seeing anything. And we brag about the things that we see and hear in the spirit. Do you not know that your experiences have not been tested, but the word of God has been tested seven times through every dispensation and it has been found to last. If you build your church upon the word of God, I don't care what men say, it will stand. If you build it upon visions and prophecies, get set, they will fall. If you build your miracle, there are many men of God who build their miracles around anointing. As good as that is, I feel very sorry for them. The word of God. The spirit and life of God. God is only commanded to go anywhere his word attracts him to. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? The supremacy. When you come to a point where you realize that the word of God is the final authority. Everybody say final authority. Concerning any area. If it's your finance, the word of God is the final authority. If it's your well-being, the word of God is final authority. So if I tell you, you will not die. And you say, ah, the man of God has spoken to me that I will not die. That is wonderful. But can I tell you something? There is a more sure word of prophecy. That you find out in God's word. That I shall not die but live to declare. Any other prophetic word that comes only comes as a confirmation. Listen, my life is grounded upon solid. I thank God that I did not start my spiritual journey on visions and dreams. I started it upon the solid foundation of seeking the word. Hallelujah. There are many people who will not believe the word of God until a man of God stands and prophesies and speaks it to them. There are many people who cannot take the word of God and believe. And say, look, this word guarantees certain things. Thank God for the gifts in the body. But do you know that the word of God is greater and bigger than any man of God? And that at the revelation of the true revelation of this word, you can open up any closed door. Koinonia is not running on guesswork. 
That's why we don't give ourselves heart attack for once. We are running upon the infallible, irrefutable, walking, practical knowledge of God's word. Did you hear what I said? We are not walking upon just a blind prophecy. Practical, irrefutable. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abided forever. What is your life built upon right now? There are many of you, our lives are built upon shadows. The day the man of God who has become the anchor to your life is not around, you are dead. Our churches are full of gullible people who are just running. Oh, prophet, just tell me something. Just touch me, just touch me. And they don't know why. Now I believe in these vessels. You will get something because they are anointed. But did you know that you are only established to the degree to which you have the working knowledge of God? If someone looks at me today and says that witches had a meeting that I would die, I'm not even going to pray about it. I tell you, I have too many important things. My 24 hours has been well sectioned. There is no space for frivolities. Hallelujah. This is why you find out that there are ministries that have a lot of crowd but no growth. No spiritual growth. Gullible beggars looking for men of God chasing after people everywhere that should be built and established in truth. It's God's desire. Shame on us if all we have in this place is a crowd of people sitting everywhere with little or no spiritual knowledge. This is why we dedicate only one Friday in the whole month. We sit under the word of God and feed you with truth that will build you so that you will now begin to command results and bring blessings to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is very powerful. There are all kinds of books that have been written about church growth, church planting, church principles, advancement. I've read some of those books and I'm sorry to tell you they are just junk. Those who wrote them do not even have a working knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Everybody say the supremacy of God's word. The word of God reigns supreme over your life. Anybody that is leading you into any spiritual dimension outside God's word is a herbalist. Run! Don't pray! That's why before we begin ministering to you, we make sure that we show you the scriptural foundation upon which we do everything. And this is why he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Very important! You must have a working, practical, experiential knowledge of God's truth. If I ask you today, why will you be successful in life? What will be your answer? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you. But if I ask you, if someone asks you right now, say, sister, can you stand up? Don't worry, I won't ask you. Stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. If I ask this lovely lady now, and I say, why are you, are you going to be successful in life? That's the only one I will ask. She said, definitely. But listen, did you know that success is not the issue of willpower? Forget about willpower has never brought anybody success. It's not even a function of resolution. When I see your investment in the word of God, I can predict your future. Hallelujah. I don't care what confessions you are making. If I do not see you contending for the truth of God's word, I know you are wasting your time and the time of others. Hallelujah. Say after me, the word of God reigns supreme. Yes. It must reign supreme. 
That means the following number one. Your life must be compelled to live by the principles of the word. Your life must be compelled. Notice I use the word compel. It says mortify your body. This body is stubborn. Your life must be compelled to come under the governing influence of the word. A believer is not just one who talks church things. A believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the word. That the word of God becomes your basis of judgment and decision. Are you listening to me? Is someone learning something? So listen to me. Hold on. Now I want to open a shop. Hallelujah. The first thing is not to run and look for capital. The first thing is to run to the word of God. And find out what is the economic program that the word of God has earmarked for the success of the believer. If you are not doing that, I feel sorry for whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. You want to get married. The first thing is not to say, Kai, Pastor Jakes, I saw this beautiful girl. Mm -mm, leave that girl alone. Run to the word. The walking knowledge. Hallelujah. And then you begin to study. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a bad thing. And so you say, wow, there are many ways to get good things in life. One of it is marriage. That becomes your basis of joy. And then you now check. One can conquer a thousand. Two can conquer ten thousand. That means you expect acceleration and increase in your life. Listen, many people do not allow the word of God, the applicable knowledge. We have knowledge that we cannot use. We cannot try. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He didn't say thy word is a book in my hands. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. That's guidance. And a light to my path. That's direction. The moment there is anything in life, the first thing, the first place to run to is the word. Search it out. Stay with the word until light breaks forth. People fast. They have no revelation of what they are doing. So it becomes a meaningless spiritual exercise. People do night vigils. They only do it because they are emulating those who have been successful. That's the reason why something can be blessing somebody else and be killing another person. The same thing. Lack of light. Hallelujah. I never do anything in my life because people are doing it. Never. People can be running. I'll just sit down and be looking at them. They say, won't you join? I say, me? Go where? Who is going to shorty my running? Who is going to take responsibility? For when God does not send you, he doesn't back you. I never do anything. That's why you notice that we don't do anything in this place. Except God directs us. And when God directs us, we are committed to it. Doggedly. What has been governing your life? What has been governing your life? For many of us, we do not have time for the word. We have time to discuss our problems with everybody. We have time to run around chewing from morning till night in the homes of prophets. And apostles and teachers and every kind of person. But we do not have time for the word. You just spend five minutes inspiring women or rhapsody of realities or every day with Jesus. Thank God for these resources. But you give your academics only that time and see if you will excel. What makes you believe? The clearest proof of love is the investment of time. Whatever you love, you will have time for it. That you do not love the word of God and spend time is a sign that is not a priority for you. Hallelujah. How amiable are your words, O oh Lord. They are my meditation day and night. You know, many of us do not understand the dynamics of how the written word will translate into making, improving the quality of your life. 
predominantly because we have not been taught. Hallelujah. I spend a major portion of my life and time building upon the word. Because the word will give me what people are chasing after. The light breaks from the word. I sit under the word. Scrolling from page to page. Searching for spiritual principles and mysteries. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Has the word of God become ultimate and final authority over your life? This is the question God is asking us. Many of us live as if we are not Christians. You live as if you are children of the devil. But when we come to church, we behave. Our decisions come from Nigerian films and advices from friends. The word of God is always the last resort for many people. When they've tried every other junk and it does not work. You meet somebody who is going through a predicament in his life and recommend scriptures and give the person, the one, throw it away. But tell the person, wake up by 12. Stand at the right side of your house. Wear only boxers. Look at the sky for 10 minutes. And say, I am free. I am free. I am free. They'll say, I like it. This is the kind of thing I like. Because we have not been taught the power of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. He says, and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Oh, that you will understand the glory. You will understand how organized your life will be. If you will give time to the word of God. Do you know how Satan makes us to run away from God's word? Distraction, distraction, distraction. Many of us are too busy and it's not God that gave you what is occupying you. It is your vain quest for ambition. I'm sorry for anybody who wants to ever be successful in life and will not first sit down with the word of God. The word of God will ease your journey in life. The word of God will guarantee your arrival. In a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The word of God. See, when the word of God becomes the basis of anything you do, your results are predictable. Koinonia will never be less than it is now. You know why? There is the working word that is granting us grace. Hallelujah. The supremacy. God is asking you a question tonight. You know, whenever I am saying these kinds of things, ladies think I'm taking them personal, but I, I need to hit you people very well because you are, you are the victims. Some of you are looking at me the way you are looking at me. This word is just jumping and passing. There are all kinds of soils. Why don't you settle with the word? One thing, matter, matter, you are concerned and upset about many things. Many of us believe that when you are connected to so 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 and so person, you will be prosperous. Let me tell you ahead of time, you are wasting your time. Because the greatest of any man is a man. Are you listening to me? Some of us are depending on the blessings of our... Some of us are depending on our degrees. Some of us are depending on any... Let me tell you, anything you are depending on that is not the word of God has already predicted your life. Doom. But happy are you when you find it. Happy are you when you find it. Right from the time... When there was nobody who would come around, the word of God already showed us a picture. Listen. Am I boring you? 
Are you receiving something? I'm challenging you because, see, the cruelty of life can only be immune. You can only be immune to it by the revelation of the word of God that you have. There is a whiplash of poverty coming upon people in ways, in, in unprecedented dimensions that will turn Christians into beggars. But to you, to you who are within, who will take the word of God serious, you will find out that you are rising. Are you listening to me? I am convinced that no man can take my life. This is no longer a prayer point. It has become my conviction. And there are, there, there are a network of scriptures that have informed this ideology. It's not just because, do you know how many text messages people have sent to me? I saw you dying. I saw them shooting you. I said, let it remain from the realm of the dream there. Because it will never happen. You do not know how immune I am. He said, I will slay a nation for your sake. A nation. Not three armed robbers or four. A nation. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. This becomes the basis of our authority and audacity in the spirit. I will never become a failure in life. No, see, this is not, I'm not confessing it to make me believe. I'm speaking forth out of the abundance of that which has been settled in my heart. You know why? It's not because Jesus is alive alone. I found the keys. Hiya. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys, brothers and sisters. If you catch it, you have caught it. The Lord is granting you keys. If you have caught it, you have caught it. I will never, till Jesus comes, taste poverty again. Forever. No, see, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bragging. No, I have found it. I have found it. He said, I have found. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. He says, look unto Abraham, your father. And to Sarah that bear thee, I called him alone and blessed him. Called him alone. So I decided to understudy the life of Abraham. Because the Bible tells me he's the biblical portrait of a blessed man. And the Bible says, and Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent. And he blessed Abraham. And he said, blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. I found in the book of Malachi, he said, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? The walking knowledge. I will never rob God of my time. Listen. God gives you 100%. And he says, give me 10% to prove that what the blessing I sent arrived to you. So that I can send another one. He said, bring ye all your tithes to my house. And prove me now, hear which saith the Lord. If I will not, number one, open the windows of heaven. Number two, shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Number three, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said, you shall be called blessed and you shall be a delightsome land. Luke 6, verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, for with the same measure you give, that is the measure you will be given. I found it. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. The Bible begins to speak about God loving a cheerful giver. 
Hallelujah. And then I found in scripture, higher. He said, the gift of a man, the gift of a man makes room. The gift of a man. And I have the greatest gift in me, the Holy Ghost. That means forever, there will always be room for me. When you build your life around the confidence of the word of God, you become unbeatable. Hallelujah. Koinonia will always remain blessed because I found in Hebrews 7, 7, it says, and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. And without contradiction, I found here the secret. Hallelujah. These are the principles that we are working with. People will keep coming for koinonia in ways that defy explanation. You know why? The Bible says, if I be lifted up. So that's the key. If I be lifted up, not a man of God. He say, I, I, Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is not given to any man. Hallelujah. I found the secret of the anointing. This is not guesswork. Uh -uh. The secret of the anointing is not just impartation. Psalms 89. I have found my servant, David. When it comes to the things of the anointing, you must be a servant. This is the secret of revelation and power. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ which is sent unto his servant John that he should show unto his servants the things that must happen. Joshua chapter 1 the Lord speaking to Joshua said Moses my servant is dead. He said and as I was with Moses so I will be with you. What is your life standing upon? What is your life standing upon? Hallelujah. What is your life standing upon? Luke 10, 19. Forever settles the issue of the devil. He says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon snakes, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy and nothing. That's why I cast out devils and sleep like a baby. The devil that would distract me has not yet been manufactured in hell. I remember saying this years ago and somebody told me, you are making too much noise, so let the person see now. What is the framework of your confidence in the spirit? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Bible says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou. You see why we talk about the presence of God? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me, not in the absence, but in the presence of my enemies. They need to be witnesses. You anoint my head with oil, and that anointing causes my cup to overflow. Hallelujah. I found the secret of commanding increase in any land. The Bible says, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let the people praise thee. And then the earth shall yield her increase. See, you are limited by your knowledge. Listen to me. You are limited. You are limited by your knowledge. If you will contend, many of us need to sit with the word of God and cry. We have a praying generation, which is great. But we have a wordless generation too. We have men and women who can pray for 12 hours. But they cannot sit with the word for 3 hours. And we have been made to believe that the moment you can pray and attack spiritual forces, they will go. You try it. This is why the prayer life of many people has no fire. And it has no power. Because their prayer is, is not consistent with the word of God. Jesus spent 3 years doing a teaching ministry with his disciples after that he released them and they shook their world they sat under his feet for three solid years day and night i ride 
these things to you, O oh excellent Theophilus, all that Jesus began to do and teach. All that Jesus began to do and teach. Your success can be predictable. It can be consistent. It can be stable. Hallelujah. I listed all the areas in my life that I know will be relevant for my human existence. And I started supporting them with solid scriptures. There's no area of my life that I've left to chance. Hallelujah. Do you have a working knowledge of the truth? Have you found truth that you are running with? What are you running with? Many of us are running with luck and guesswork. How are you going to know that that is the job? Based on salary? Based on what? See, the life of many believers is, is too unpre is too, is too slippery. We are not solid in our work. This is why we dwindle at anything. Whatever is happening, everybody is running. Something else is happening, everybody is running. When will you gain stability in the spirit? Hallelujah. We have a prosperous ministry forever. Because the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. These are the conditions. So, fruitfulness and productivity is not just dash. There are conditions. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law doth he meditate day and night. What is the result? He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. And then he says, whatsoever he doeth, prosper. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Everybody say the word is final authority over my life. See, some of you want increase, you want joy, you want grace, but you are obviously working against your own success. Because you are walking against the world. Many of you are, you want prosperity, but you are so greedy. There are some battles Satan cannot fight. The only way Satan can fight your harvest is to fight your seed time. I see a lot of people who want to be rich. You get angry when you see rich people. You get angry when you see blessed people. As though they are being blessed, stopped you. From achieving your own. When you see a blessed man who is blessed by kingdom principles, look at his giving life. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, or cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflowing. Many of you are greedy and selfish and self-centered. That's why you will never get the blessings of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many miracle services you attend. Don't be offended. I'm teaching you the principle that will help you. Hallelujah. Do not envy a giver. 
he cannot help his situation. He will remain blessed. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. By the grace of God. As soon as the offerings are collected, before anything is done with the money, I'm sharing these principles with you because I want it to work in your life. 10% of it is taken on to God. We can't stop being blessed. It doesn't matter what your personal feeling is about it. Hallelujah. You can be anointed and keep growing in the anointing. Are you listening to me? There are many people who can be anointed and full of fire. And then one day you find out that they are no longer anointed. No. That's anointing that came as a result of impartation. Without knowledge to back it. I can lay hands on you and you begin to do supernatural things. But your lack of knowledge will mislead you. So it must be supported by knowledge. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Say I contend for knowledge. I don't see limits in my life. This is not because I read a motivational book. I found out in God's word. That if thou canst believe, all things are possible, not to a Christian, to him that believeth. If thou canst believe, that's the only barrier. If thou canst believe. The Bible says, when they shall say there is a casting down. For us, our story is different. We will say there is a lifting up. I believe this. I believe this. Hallelujah. Psalms 128 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It says, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And all of that, he begins to speak. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The fear of the Lord. That means the fear of the Lord has a lot of blessings. If you do not fear the Lord, why will you want his blessings? See, this is what people like David Oyedeko and other people call the covenant. They call it the covenant because once you play your part, God is committed to his part. Hallelujah. I found in life that when you solve people's problems, you become blessed forever. This is the secret of generational impact and influence. Many people think money makes a ministry. Impact brings blessings. When you bless people, they are too grateful to leave you the way they met you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the fire upon the altar shall not go down. That's why we will not stop praying. That's why I won't stop fasting. And then shall thy light break as the morning. Access to unlimited insight and illumination of the spirit. Now that you know these things, do you live by it? Do you practice it? Can I tell you something? Many of you have, have been accusing God. But sit down this night and you will know God is fair. You are the one who has been killing yourself. Is that true? Many of you know that. No. Look, God is just. He told Cain. He said, if you do like your brother, will he not be accepted? That's what he told Cain. Cain was angry that his brother's sacrifice was accepted. I was watching Dunamis TV. And I saw Paul and Encher's wife. He was not around. And she was ministering in their healing and deliverance service. And I just sat down. I said, no, God, you are just. There is no partiality in you at all. If I do what that man is getting, I will get his result. Full stop. Period. Rather than criticizing people, especially for those of you who 
in your small campus fellowship or this and that you're already used to talk why don't you find out what they are doing this you see let me tell you something i say this with all humility don't misunderstand me we have this ugly pride in the body of christ huh that we are all equal now i believe we are equal listen we are equal in christ but we are not equal in knowledge we are not equal in grace there are some people that have been given authority by reason of certain things doing business with the spirit in deep waters the church of god has this ugly arrogant way when i see a man that carries something i don't have i sit down I don't come to him and say we are colleagues. Uh -uh. I sit down. When I'm listening to Oyedeko or any of this man of God, if you come, if you distract me, I will, I will drive you away because I'm receiving. Hallelujah. I wanted to know the secret of wealth. Because I knew it was going to be necessary because of the kind of life and ministry God is giving. And I didn't want to live this false life of begging people from left, right and center. I found out from scripture that God sent me to be a blessing to you, not a burden. I can't yoke you with my responsibilities. It's good to go and meet the one who called me. And so I went and met God. Do you know what? God told me he's not going to teach me anything. I should find vessels. That's where I found that scripture. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. In other words, God said, there are people who are commanding results in this area. Search for them. Be humble enough to sit under their feet and learn. And I said, fine. Got their materials, got their books. Sat down with an open heart and light broke from my spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. I remember one time I was I was praying and I, I, I slept off and I had a dream. In the dream, Bishop Oyedeko was sitting down and I came. And from my wallet, I took some money and I was dropping at his feet. When I took that money and I was dropping at his feet, he looked at me. He said, there's still some in the wallet. I should bring out everything. I brought out everything and I dropped it. And then he brought out a carton just out of a drawer. It was full of all kinds of currencies, mint. And he looked at me and the Holy Ghost spoke to me expressly. He said, the keys of prosperity that I gave Bishop Oyedeko, I have given it unto you. My life is a product of encounters that are a derivative of the word. Follow them. This is what I found in the word. Who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. So what do you need? Knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge. Knowledge. Could it be that that's what you need to live where you are to the next level? He told the woman, 2 Kings 4, he said, what do you have in your house? Listen to what she said. She said, a little. This was her, this was her problem. It was not the oil. The cruise holding the oil was little, so it could not do much for her. And the prophet told her what her solution is. He said, if you increase capacity, the oil will increase. Knowledge. Where I am today. Oh, if you see the way I cry before God. What you see today is our mindset of yesterday. Wait and see what God is doing with us today. I tell you, there is, there is, there is, an, there is a wave that is coming. Because of the infallible word of God, I can stake my life at this word unto death. Fathers have gone before us. They took this same scripture, who through faith subdued nations. They shut the mouths of lions. People did great things. A man of God went to Lagos. The first time he went to Lagos, he slept under the bridge. But right now the world is celebrating that man. He's called Archbishop Sam Amaga. This world turned ordinary. Listen, listen to me. 
this world took ordinary people show me what you are doing with this world and let me tell you what your future will be i don't need to be a prophet just show me let me see the value you are placing on this world i can tell you what your tomorrow will be like i respect the word i don't just believe it i submit to the governing authority of the word i love the word i love the word hear me tonight i'm giving you a big key epignosis i will find out the working knowledge concerning my finances the working knowledge concerning success in ministry the working knowledge concerning intimacy with the holy spirit the working knowledge concerning miracles signs and wonders the working knowledge concerning church growth the working knowledge concerning generational impact the working knowledge concerning leadership I found my way out of every nonsense in life. It's only a matter of time. I found my way. I found my way. Not when the word of God is here for me. Not when the Holy Ghost. I found my way. I'm telling you. Every factor notwithstanding. This is how you can rejoice in the Lord. He said rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Say after me, I'm blessed. Let me tell you how you are blessed. You're not just blessed because a man of God saw that you marry a rich man. You are blessed because the gift of God's word has been given unto you. And the Holy Spirit. The word of God has not gained supremacy in the life of you. How many of us tonight can look at yourself and in all sincerity say, I'm living by the word. If you are living by the word, you will pack out of that guy's house. Because the Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That you are in his house, you are not married, you are sitting comfortably. You are violating the word. Don't think you will get the same result. See, people, let me tell you, the mercy of God does not override his justice. Hallelujah. You can't be smoking and drinking. Roaming around and giving God 10 minutes. And there is somebody laboring in the spirit. You think you will get the same result? No, sir. Straight to the point. Let me just tell you. It won't happen that way. Hallelujah. There are some of you in relationships with an unbeliever. This guy does not love God. What does the Bible say? He said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He said, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? You know it, but it has not become a working knowledge. You have not submitted to the influence of that word. Are you listening to me? It is the word that you know. He said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you grow in character, when you grow in grace, the Bible says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for grace to be multiplied. And the more your knowledge, the more your peace. He said, grace and peace, shalom be multiplied unto you. The supremacy of God's word. The second thing I want to touch on quickly and then we'll pray is the renewal of the mind. The principle of renewal. Please write it. When the Lord asked me to share this, I was very excited because somebody needs to hear it. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Who is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of lords. Praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. 
all the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing pray. It says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at me. Look at me. Those of you in business and entrepreneurial things, those of you who are called into that area and have read business books, there is the fundamental law. In fact, in ancient times, they hid this law from people and they call it the law of attraction. Hallelujah. This is a business law. It really does not apply to us in that context, but I, I'm just saying that to teach you something. Some of the wealthiest people in the world believe that it is this singular law. That has brought them this. The law of attraction. Praise the Lord. And the law of attraction says that every man is a living magnet. That you attract to your life the things that are consistent with your most dominant thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen. Very powerful. So every time a nation wanted to conquer another nation. What happened? They kept creating through the media the things that will make them think failure and defeat. When they find out that they've taught failure so much, the army will go and conquer them. It worked like magic. This was the principle Adolf Hitler used to conquer. This was a principle that the Roman Empire used. I've done an extensive research on it. The law of attraction. But the, the, the danger of the law of attraction is they do not give credit to God. They give credit to the earth. They believe that the earth is a living entity and it can read people's thoughts. That there are magnetic waves that leave you through your thoughts and it has an attracting power. Science students, this is what Isaac Newton tried to study that he called the universal law of gravitation. Remember? That's what he was trying. He was trying to show the union between two different bodies the earth and any other body, that there is an attraction between them. So people called it the law of attraction. So that means, according to them, that everything, this is what gave birth to this principle of visualizing. You see that? They say visualize. Do this and that. You know, visualize. Um, see yourself successful. See yourself great. See yourself this and that and that and that. That's why the rich people have certain ideologies. Let me tell you where they took it from. That's why I took you to that scripture. Proverbs 23. Hallelujah. It says, for as he what? God equates a man's thoughts with his life. Are you seeing it there? It says, for as he thinks, where? That is how he will become. I'm teaching you a powerful principle. Ah, so my thoughts. Run with me, Genesis 11. Let's look at it quickly. We are going to pray. I want to show you how powerful this principle are. That, that your most dominant thoughts have already started living before they manifest. Genesis 11. Verse 2. Let's just start from verse 2. And it came to pass, this was the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Listen, please. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks for stone and they had asal for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. Listen, Nimrod was creating an imagination in them. He was telling them, this is what we are going to do. Let's occupy ourselves with these thoughts. Are you listening to me? I want to show you something powerful about the renewal of the mind. And let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down. Listen. So, this was their imagination. Is that true? The Bible says the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Stop. Had they built it? Look at what God is saying. Is in your Bible. It says, let us see what the men had. They are finished building it. This is from God's perspective. Look at it now. Is it not on the stage? They said, let us start. The Bible says God came to look and say, these guys have finished this thing. As a man thinketh in his heart, 
This is a powerful principle. Listen, if, if you catch this, you will change your life and destiny. He says, let us see what the sons of men had built. Ha! Question. They've not started. This was the board meeting to discuss. But what did God see in the realm of the spirit? This is what the business people call the law of attraction. That your thoughts are living to a point when it crystallizes. Not even the devil can stop it. Let's finish up. Hmm. And the Lord said, listen. Indeed, the people are one. And they have all one language. Listen. He said, and this is what they begin to do. Uh-uh, stop. I thought he said they have already built it. Is that true? Follow me. Help me now, Koinonia. Now, he's saying, this is what they begin to do. Ah. He just saw from the realm of the spirit that they are finished. But they were about to start it in the physical. He says, now nothing that they have proposed to do will what? Was Satan mentioned in this equation? Even God testified. He said, if we don't stop these people, they will do it. How did God stop it? Seven. Verse seven. Come now. This is God. Oh. Let us go there and confuse their language. This was, God said, look, the only remedy is to break this unity, give them divided languages, divided thoughts. So, it is a language that creates thoughts. Are you following me now? I'm trying to establish something. Help me, believers. God did not say, let's go and change their mind. He said, let's just change their language. When their language changes, their minds will change and this building will crumble from the spirit. I show you a mystery. You will live an unbeatable life. Let us change their language. Hmm. Romans 12. I'm excited. May somebody catch something tonight. Oh God. God wants you to change your situation. May somebody catch something tonight. Verse 1. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, listen. When it comes to renewal, Paul is beseeching brethren by them. He said, this is too important. I have to beg you. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. He says, do not be patterned. The word world, yes, the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. That comes with this age. The thinking pattern. It says do not be conformed. To the thing. That means there is a thought process. That this world brings. And if you stay like that. You will never be successful. Are you listening to me? You see the reason why many people are failures. Before you are born. There is a system that has been organized. And the media is helping it. You don't know. Listen. Listen. One day I'm going to teach you something called the conspiracy of the rich. And you will see how a lot of people and our media is keeping us where we are. You see how the message of poverty helps you to attract all this nonsense to your life. We think it is a good teaching. The Bible says, as a man thinking. So the Bible says, since your thought is the same, words are what crystallize into your thoughts. Is that correct? For time's sake, we, not, we may not read it, but let me, let me just quote it quickly. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith, verse 1 to 3 actually, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, he said that for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand. Through faith. That the world, okay, we have it here. Listen, the world was framed by what? Okay, so we see the word here. But how did it happen? So that the things which were not seen, there was something in the mind of God. Uh, 
I'll never be a failure in life. Never. 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 See, don't just get emotional about this. I found my place. I did a teaching years ago called the law of atmosphere. I create only the atmosphere that allows the things of heaven to find expression. So you are dropping blue films in your house. You are dropping cigarettes and wondering why demons are, are oppressing you. Are you seeing that? Many of us laugh. You think it's nice. You don't find me using vulgar words. Oh, it's not for people like us. We are... No, 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 no. I'm guarding my heart. That's the next scripture. Quickly. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Say, guard your heart with all diligence. Seeing then that your heart is such a vital point in your destiny. The Bible says for us, one to read. Read it. It's projected. One to read. We're going to pray. Keep your heart. Listen. The word there is create a garrison around it. The way you fence it. Create a garrison. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come and pollute your heart with nonsense. That's how they are killing your life. When you come to my place, there is a protocol. You don't speak anyhow. I will walk you out. Hallelujah. You see why the Bible says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. What does it mean to consider? Brood on it. Think about it. Many of us are experts at thinking about yesterday. Oh, if only I did this. And they warned me. Now that it has happened, come. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press on towards the mark of the high calling. Everybody say the renewal of the mind. So I take the word of God, which is an ideology, and I begin to change my mindset. Everybody say, change my mindset. Yes, yes, yes. That's what begins to happen to you. So they gave birth to you in a house. There's, it, was, it was just firewood that they were gathering. You've been carrying that mindset. Suddenly you begin to find in God's word that there is a greater life. There is a better place for you in Christ. Your mind begins to wrestle it. People tell you you are good for nothing. Then you keep finding another testimony. But whose report will you believe? I choose to take the word of God. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, not the reading. The entrance, the entrance, not the reading. An understanding unto the simple. Day and night I meditate on what the Bible has said about me. And I believe it. I'm above principalities and powers. I am convinced about this. I am above. I am above. Completely above. I am blessed. I am prosperous. My heart is already totally committed to God. There is no backsliding. It's not part of the testimony of my life. It won't happen. No. I walk circumspectly. I walk by the wisdom of the spirit. Am I challenging somebody? Epignosis. The walking up applicable knowledge of the truth that you can apply in your life and you receive results what situation are you in right now do you know that if you take the word of god you can create a glorious destiny many of you are waiting for nigeria to change your destiny let me tell you ahead of time there is a root shock waiting we are the ones who are coming to change them Lift up your Bible if you have one. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I am convinced that it is not a lie. That it is truth. It is able to give me a new mindset. A new ideology. A new thought life. That will translate into a glorious destiny. I declare that I believe nothing that is not consistent with the word. I obey nothing that is not consistent with the word. Say I leave the word. 
I talk the word. I believe the word. I ask the word. I think the word. When this becomes your life, he said they are life to those who find them. I'll never break down and just run and you will not come and see me on Friday. You say, why? I say, ah, there's something wrong. No. See, the word has become my new eyes. I have put the word in my eyes. It has, I am blind to any other thing that is not the word. Can you see the solution, not the sickness? Can you see the breakthrough, not the limitation? Do you see yourself rising? Listen, this is powerful. It's the principle of renewal. Sister, do you see yourself marrying? Or you are just sitting down and camping around your dream and saying in the dream, I saw a wedding, my husband was there, was not there. Change it! Amazing the things we allow to govern our lives. Casting down every yetzah, every imagination. I cast them down. Because if I don't cast them down, they will become my reality. I refuse. I am not poor. I may have taken Gary. I refuse to meditate upon that. I'm well favored. This is what the constitution of the kingdom tells me. I'm above only. It says my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. I don't care even if my life is not diving. As far as I'm concerned, I'm shining brighter. I have the spirit of faith. There's no unfruitfulness in my life. There's no barrenness in my life. I have the spirit of faith. I'm convinced about its reality. I remain anointed forever. No devil, no Jezebel can take it down. It came by revelation. It is sustained by revelation. Hallelujah. Koinonia keeps moving from glory to glory because the Bible says whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever. Epignosis. If you find yourself doubting the word of God at any point, you truly did not believe it. Are you listening to me? That's the proof. There are many people that only believe God's word based on the result it shows. If it does not seem to show any result, you start looking for alternatives. It means you did not believe it. Look at me. When a woman fails to give birth, does she run to go and cross check if she's a man? Why? She's settled that there is something wrong. But to ask whether she's a woman or not is not an issue. Hallelujah. When a man is important, does he run to the hospital and say, Doctor, verify, paradventure. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. Thank God I don't need another man's confession to build my life. It's entirely up to me and God. So this excludes my enemies out of the equation of my success. I'm happy about this. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He said, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray in one minute. Shakata parekate balaka posataya. Come on, pray in tongues in one minute. Mande praskata pekata prakoso patataba. Whose report will you believe? Jembria takata libosa. If thy eye be single, thy body will be full of light. If thy eye be single, as a man thinketh in his heart, so will his reality become. Come on, pray in one minute. Come on, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Can I tell you something? The believer is a mystery to creation. The believer is a mystery. If you don't believe this, you will die and watch others rise and it will not be God's fault. This is why you are hearing it. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Lord, I submit my life to the authority of your word. Listen. Some of you tonight, may God break that stubborn heart that will not bend to the word. Some of you, as, as small as you are, you are so stubborn. You won't bend to the word. You know what the Bible says. And there is grace already released to you. Take advantage of it. Stay with the word. Build yourself upon the word. Stay with the word. Run away from anything that is not of God. It, anything that is not of God is reprogramming your mind to failure. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I submit to your word. I submit to your word. Let him that steal, steal no more. I live by your values. Uncompromising. By your values. Your word created the heavens and the earth. I'm giving you a key that will make you blessed, that will make you powerful, that will give you grace for generational impact. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. My word shall not fail. Cry unto God. Cry unto God. Your word governs my life. Your word governs my conversations. I submit. I submit. I submit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. The Bible says... As a man thinketh, what have you been allowing? What words have you been allowing to shape your mind? You listen to all kinds of corrupt and ungodly music. The problem is, they are mind builders. They control your thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen, make a determination today. That all the gates into your heart, your eyes, your ears, that you are going to culture them to make sure they only receive things that will minister life. It's a decision. It's a resolve. People will misunderstand you. But they can't stop your greatness. Hallelujah. Don't listen to any kind of thing. Don't take yourself to places that will cause you to begin to think evil. Take the word of God. Take the word of God like a drug. When you are sick, they tell you take two in the morning. Two in the Take it like that. You are going to pray right now. Listen. The Bible says casting down every imagination. You're going to speak against anything that has informed your thoughts. You know mindsets you have that are not consistent. You're going to challenge them right now with the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to be a failure. I'm not a non-entity. No, no. I'm relevant in God's program. The grace of God is at work in my life. Mate prakata shekete berebosha rekete kose. I can't die of that terminal disease. I can't die with that genotype. No. Lift your voice and pray. 
I don't believe that fibroid is a false report. I don't believe that tumor, that growth, it will die in my body. It will die in my body. No sickness can thrive in my body. No weakness. I am strong, strong, alive, mentally alert. I refuse the curse of poverty. I am the blessed of the Lord, empowered to succeed. The wisdom of God is at work in my life. The favor of God is at work in my life. I refuse any report that is not of God. I refuse it. I challenge it. I challenge it. I challenge it. Reports from the media. Report from my past failures. I challenge it. Make sure you are praying. Shake it, go, it, go, I'm the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I prosper. I'm growing in revelation. Growing in insight. Growing in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pay yourselves into to hold somebody. Just two minutes, we are going to pray. Make it three. Make it three, please. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. Speak the word of faith into that person's life. Every truth you know that can set men free about their life, their finances, go ahead and prophesy it. Speak it. Shake it kabariata. The blessed of the Lord. The blessed of the Lord anointed to excel. You won't die young. All the numbers of your days you will fulfill. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Your path is as a shining light. Shines brighter, brighter, brighter. You are renewed in knowledge. You are put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of he that has created him. Tell the person, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you with wisdom. I bless you with favor. I bless you. Grace be multiplied to you tonight. I bless you. Let your hands be strong. Let fear vanish from your life. Your God is not dead. Your God is not dead. Your God is not dead. Your God is alive. But I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Take your eyes off the limits. Take your eyes off the challenges. Take your eyes off the failure. I'm blessed. I think greatness. I think favor. I think intimacy. I think about God, His ways, His life. His word is my guarantee. His word is my guarantee. God cannot lie. 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 Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I'm anointed. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The grace of God is at work in my life. My words carry power. My mind is renewed by the word of God. My path is as a just, the path of the just. Shining brighter and brighter. There's no failure in my life. I refuse setback. I have authority over devils, over sickness, over failure. I'm not weak. I'm not beggarly. I'm the strong.
But I'm not finished. I'm only thinking of what to tell you. Let's continue. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointing that strengthens me. I'm above only, not beneath. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up. The favor of God is upon my life. The glory of God is upon my life. I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with death. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Believe the word of God. Contend for light that you can apply and you will end darkness forever. You're worshiping with us tonight for the first time. I'll pray for you shortly. But let me just do two things. Please keep standing. Hallelujah. Now, all the students from dark, if you're from dark, please come out quickly. All the students from dark, I understand they're writing their exams quickly. Please come and celebrate them as they come quickly. All the students from dark, please save, save time, save time, do it quickly. God bless you. Thank you. Come and line up here quickly. I want to pray for you and bless you. Hallelujah. I first and foremost want to tell you that we appreciate you. Hallelujah. We appreciate every one of you coming from dark. We celebrate you. Thank you so much for your contributions to make the work of God here great. I love you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. And we apologize. I want to use this opportunity to apologize to every other institution that is not ABU. Hallelujah. Because it looks like, okay, we're just focusing. When we talk about students, it's just ABU. No, our hearts are with everybody. Are you listening to me? All the polytechnics, all the secondary schools, all the institutions, our hearts are with you. Praise God. And all the people who are working in various places. And please let us know when you need prayers or you have any special uh, program or activity and we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Dark people, you cannot but excel. Are you listening to me? The spirit of excellence is upon you. I don't care what your assessments have been. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands, all of you, as I pray for you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Go and succeed. Go and conquer. Smash records. Do something that has not been done. The life and the spirit of God is upon you. And Elihu said there is a spirit in you. And the inspiration of the Almighty makes you of understanding. You are of quick understanding. Even better than your teachers. For you have an unction from the Holy One. And that teaches you all things. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are well favored. You will not be victims of exam malpractice. In the name of Jesus, your scripts will not be missing. For those of you who need the mercy of God, that mercy speaks for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bless you. You will excel. Those of you who are in your final year, we graduate you in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that you are walking in glory. God bless you. Take our love to all your colleagues and our blessings in Jesus' name. Celebrate them. There is no gift of fasting. Hallelujah. There's no such thing in the Bible as the gift of fasting. Fasting has always been a sacrifice. So it's not, there's, there's no such... It's not, it's, not, it's not anything unusual when you are tired. There is no gift of fasting. Fasting is not abstinence from food. Fasting is abstinence from food to seek the Lord. If you are not seeking the Lord, you are not fasting. Hallelujah. Most times, people just stay away from food and go around gisting, sleeping, gossiping, allowing the devil to use them. That's not fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food to seek. The seeking part is the difference between fasting and just maybe some sort of diet control or whatever it is are we together now the idea is not to starve yourself you see you have to understand this the idea is not starvation it was on account of food a man gave away his destiny he says i prefer to eat 
than to have my destiny what is it in my destiny let me exchange that destiny for food called Esau in the Bible it was not clothes he said I am so hungry to hell with my destiny bring me that pottage of red steel and his destiny went away many people laugh at Esau but that's what we do all our lives we allow food to take away the place of an encounter that can change your life forever there is no one on earth i know no one who truly works in authentic power with god who does not fast not just as a ritual what food is to your sustenance is what fasting is to your spiritual growth nobody outgrows food nobody you can't say i've been eating for 40 years are we together now so i need us to be at the same pace so that we don't think it's just a starvation remember in the book of acts 23 don't turn there there were certain people who went to consult diviners on what to do with paul and the bible says they bound themselves with a curse and they said we will neither eat nor drink until paul dies fasting so that an anointed man of god can die are we together now so we need to understand that this that god is doing is to empower us so that we can rise in life it's a sacrifice that god has designed for our lifting even jesus himself fasted and jesus was teaching and say when you fast not if you fast and when God declares a corporate fast, there are individual fasts, but there is a corporate fast. That is a commanded fast. Is this not the kind of fast I have commanded? You can do the one you want to do, but when God commands it, it's because there is something that he has in mind. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated for a while. Just pray one prayer lord jesus open my eyes open my eyes to the understanding of your word open my eyes please pray make sure you are praying open my eyes open my eyes oh chapter 19 tonight i'm sharing on the power of knowledge the power of knowledge luke chapter 19 in the new testament jesus cried twice the first reason why he cried listen carefully the first reason why jesus cried was when he was weeping at lazarus's grave and the bible records that oh how he loved him so love was one of the first reasons why jesus cried the second reason why he cried is found in luke chapter 19 from verse 41 luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 blessed be the name of the lord luke chapter 19 verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city listen carefully and wept over it saying if thou has known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hidden from thy eyes jesus stood over a city and was weeping he was watching the way the people were guessing their lives 
and jesus your jesus started crying and his reason for crying is that if you had known the things that are responsible for your peace responsible for your peace not just the, uh, the quietness responsible for your results jesus stood and was crying and his, his purpose of crying was the ignorance of the people in that city and the inevitable fact that they would continue to be victims of that ignorance he says you do not know the things that belong for your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes meaning that although you are looking you cannot see them this kingdom we have been drumming it from day one of this fast that this kingdom is a kingdom of information it's a kingdom of light dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge not desire knowledge not intention knowledge hallelujah dominion in this kingdom is not just based on knowledge but based on sufficient knowledge having knowledge is not enough when a student goes to write exams the student is not writing another subject if he gets seven over hundred is that true he failed 93 percent and passed seven percent but the seven percent is not enough to pass the student so having knowledge is not enough there is a level of knowledge it takes for dominion to be true if the light goes off right now and you light a matchbox it is light but it is not sufficient enough to turn the night in this auditorium today so saying you have knowledge is not enough the knowledge must be sufficient to a degree that can bring you the results you desire the problem for many of us is not necessarily ignorance it is insufficient knowledge is god speaking to us mm. we need deep enough knowledge not just knowledge deep enough knowledge about finances deep enough knowledge about divine health deep enough knowledge about the anointing deep enough knowledge about church growth deep enough knowledge about increase having knowledge is not enough it is true that we know some things but the challenge is those things may not hold all the keys that are required to command the results that we desire let me show you a verse that i found very very interesting first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 this blessed me in no small way first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to that means the proof that you are knowledgeable is that there is a desire in you for more that the moment there is a point in your life where you believe that you know enough the apostle is speaking that by the spirit that a sense of arrival and complacency is a symptom of insufficient knowledge Sinat sang that the more i know you the more i want to know you so when you encounter god when you encounter the spirit of knowledge and revelation the sign is that although you are working in great results there remain a hunger in you for more i am passionate about knowing the areas of ignorance in my life because there is so much i do not know are we together everything we desire in the kingdom is available the grace of god has made it available but it takes knowledge not just faith faith must be upon an, a person and an information that is correct you can have faith in error you can have faith in an information that is not correct so it's not just having faith the object of your faith must be authentic You need a high level of insight and light a high level of insight 
a high level of light are we together scattered in this auditorium and all around and all those following us from the nations of the world the reason listen carefully the reason why we have requests why we have desires is because there are expectations before us that are not yet our testimonies there are expectations before us there are things we desire some of you are here tonight trusting god for superior dimensions of the anointing some of you here are pastors you are struggling with membership up today down tomorrow and it's not that you are not anointed but not to the degree to get the result you desire there are people who are trusting god for certain levels of graces but you see the thing is not just to say i have knowledge is it to the degree that can give you the result I always liken knowledge i also liken the anointing to money if i want to take this this bottle of water and it is 100 naira if i have 70 naira i have money but not the value enough to purchase this this is what i am looking for so i must upgrade that value to the level that it can deliver this result are we together knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet of God was speaking by the Spirit and he said, my people. He never said the hidden, my people. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Satan manipulated their understanding to make them see life from a perspective and the result of that aberration is the pain and the discomfort that they have. Knowledge. The Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance, not just prayer. I told you that not all spirits go by prayer. The Bible never said so. This kind, there is a kind that goes by prayer. There is a kind that goes by prayer and fasting. There is a kind that goes by knowledge. The devourer does not go by fasting. The devourer does not go by knowledge. The devourer goes by obedience to, a, obedience to a correct information. Are we together? I believe in fasting. I believe in prayer. That's what we are doing now. But I'll be lying to you. Many believers keep mocking themselves, thinking just because you are praying and dissipating energy, it will cover for every spiritual predicament. No, sir. At best, God will take advantage of your alignment in prayer to lead you back to an information that is able to help you. In this kingdom, we reign on the strength of the light that we have. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. For as long as it is night time in your life, weeping continues. The Bible says weeping endureth for the night. You don't stop crying just because you are tired of crying. You stop crying because light enough to turn your night to day. We are calling this place night now simply because something has happened to the sun in as much as we know. And we are not able to receive that illumination sufficient enough to turn the night to day. But a few hours now into the morning, everything is going to change we rise in this kingdom by light not desire i desire prosperity is not enough to give you i desire to walk in divine hell i desire for that hepatitis to go i desire for that cancer to go i desire for that hiv that fibro to leave my body i desire for that barren womb to take in it takes knowledge it takes knowledge not just desire hallelujah you hear the testimonies of the people who god is granting them grace don't you think god just chose to bless them now it is now the knowledge has come to them and so it makes it look like this is the season god has wanted to bless you he's always wanted to do it but you only arise and shine when your light comes not when it's available it has always been available but the day it comes to you every lady's womb in this auditorium can take seed but it doesn't make you pregnant automatically the day a real seed enters that womb then the process of conception starts are we together but as you are now seated that womb can produce 
so it's not enough to just say i have potentials i know what can happen no if god wants to change your life he grants you knowledge every religion that oppresses men in the world thrives through mysticism and ignorance the strength of victimization and oppression is withholding classified information from people the difference between the intelligence unit of the american nation and other nations of the world is their access to classified information there is a kind of information that is not given to the third world nations to know it is only supplied to them if they go and plead with the intelligence unit and then they give them terms is that true as terrible as terrorism is on earth right from space there is a system of watching on earth real time but that information will not be given to you is the privilege of the holders of that information that's why they are called world powers they are not called world powers because they are bigger they are called world powers because they have access to classified information so we reign in this kingdom not just because of how macho we are not just because of how fluent we are but the access to the information the bible says jesus himself knew what to do that's dominion to know what to do good master what must i do to be saved in other words i want to be saved but it's not yet my experience and i know that the bridge between me and that result is knowledge good master what must i do not just that i desire to be saved good master what must i do to be blessed financially what must i do to be lifted what must i do to rise to a realm where my body no longer hosts sickness i shared with us a revelation i don't know which of the days that the bible says when a spirit leaves a man remember a spirit does not leave a man on his own it is casted is that true out of that person in my name ye shall cast out devils they don't want to go but an anointing compels them to leave and then the bible says they go through desert regions listen carefully and something about the desert does something to that spirit and without any prayer warrior praying the spirit leaves the desert and prefers to come back to the man hmm. the desert that something can happen in a desert no prayer meeting going on no fasting going on a spirit can be so uncomfortable in the desert and it will rather return back to the man that means there is something the body of man can become that can make spirits even without any man praying they will leave and that mystery you see in the desert is what the bible calls the mystery of fire this fire you see is a mystery there is something about the heat of the desert physically that does something to spirits and they prefer that's why when jesus casted them they entered the swine straight into the water straight into the water and the people drove and said leave this place when a spirit leaves a man there is something about the habitation of a mortal man that is conducive for a spirit and the moment it leaves it it goes through desert regions and something happens not compatible to their design and he says i have to leave this area of hostility so the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire that when a man becomes a flame of fire no spirit no charm no no cause by themselves you will have a dream and watch certain things leave you the first thing that happened to samson they bound his hand and the bible says when the hand of the lord came upon him suddenly heat from nowhere turned that thing the bible says it was like flax and all of a sudden he let it go Are we together we must be deeply passionate about spiritual knowledge not useless knowledge there are all kinds of knowledge on earth occultism can give you knowledge about the spirit realm that's why jesus said i am the door the authorized system for routing this knowledge you can read all kinds of books online 
and that's why we have to be careful especially for we young people because in our appetite to chase knowledge we have found ourselves dappling into occultic there are books that moses wrote but those books are occultic books your real moses he wrote those books before he encountered god he wrote them as a very good student who was trained in egypt today they use those books for occultism he teaches you geometry how to align yourself to certain angles on the earth that will make you be in touch with the constellations moses taught it so when we talk of knowledge we are not just talking of a random pursuit of anything that is spiritual in this day and age where we measure respect for ministry by how much what we supposedly call debt we must be careful the proof of knowledge is the deliverance that it brings that's why many people keep growing supposedly in revelation and with all that rema the devil oppresses you as if that he's telling you i'm not aware whatever it is you are celebrating i'm not aware through knowledge liberates we pride ourselves with useless knowledge that is incapable of standing the test of time and bringing the victory that we desire stood over the city and wept and said you do not know the things that belong for your peace hallelujah let me show you something psalms 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 thank you jesus it says and in thy majesty right prosperously because of what truth not just meekness not just all of these things and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things right prosperously not because of desire because of truth he says and ye shall know the truth and if it is really the truth you can know what you think is the truth you can know what a pastor tells you is the truth you can know what a denomination tells you is the truth but if it is really the truth the bible says it makes men free there are supposed truths in the body of christ that don't make men free ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth acquiring things that puff us up knowledge that puffs up doesn't heal doesn't deliver doesn't bless doesn't make people closer to god there is power in knowledge there is power in knowledge there is power when knowledge is applied we reign in this kingdom by the mysteries that we know but the manifestation the potency of those truths are brought to the scene when we act the first thing to do is to get knowledge not to act the first thing to do is to build conviction through the requisite knowledge that will bring you the result this bible you see is a compendium of all kinds of knowledge that scatter across different subject matters so the assignment of the believer is to walk as though you are walking through a garden and find the details that are responsible in this book is the knowledge that will take anybody from a failure to a success it's true in this book your assignment is to walk with the spirit of god are we together to be able to piece together all the required information not some not as much as you want all the required information in this world there is a system where men can walk in divine health it is true it is true now if your experience has not captured that reality it does not mean the word of god lied it is that you have not been able to construct in your spirit and your mind all the keys that are required to produce that outcome you can give me the ingredients to make fried rice and miss one important ingredient and what i will produce will not be called fried rice yes rice but not fried rice 
the difference between jollof rice and fried rice is combination rice is there in all of them are we together now yes there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ there is a lot of cramming scripture there is a lot of quoting scripture there is a lot of devotionals there are a lot of translations of the bible there are so many books but there is very little knowledge that is required because if that knowledge translates to wisdom it will be justified by the children that it will produce hallelujah i don't want the kind of knowledge that puffs me up into pride you know knowledge can do something to you if you are not careful it can bring you to a sense of pride open to john chapter 4 verse you just ah he's going to verse 17 but the person who is talking there is not spiritual he's not god-fearing he's under oppression he's sick as he's talking there and broke on top yet the person is telling you i know you are going to verse 17 that's ex the exact kind of knowledge satan needs so he he deceives you into being convinced that you are also a colleague in the realm of results whereas your life is not producing anything i know everything about getting people filled with the holy ghost i can go to acts chapter one yes i know isaiah 28 i know joel chapter two here is a gentleman in need of the baptism and you stand and struggle around there and create all kinds of flimsy excuses i know what the bible says concerning prosperity oh malachi chapter 3 bring ye all the tithes oh you know luke chapter 6 i know for my sake he became poor show me the results show me in your mind and show me in your life how god anointed jesus is it that one i know it i i can even tell you the amplified version and we think that just because we gather those things we have knowledge no sir no sir we must be passionate about knowledge just because they made you a bible study leader in your church does not mean you are knowledgeable you are just the one who is representing the church and that's wonderful continue doing what you are doing but if it is results you are looking for you have to go back it's not a bible study manual that makes you knowledgeable demons don't have respect for those things i'm not against them but i'm saying much more than those things you have to go and sit down martha was running up and down he said martha martha you were worried and 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 um offended about many things he said one thing is needful to sit down at the master's feet lord what is this secret to favor what is it not i know there is favor most of the results we want we believe it exists but how to make it our experience is where the challenge is and that's one of the benefits of fasting ultimately your faith rises but the bible says the kind of fast i have commanded your light will break forth there is something about the supremacy that your spirit man will gain over your flesh because your flesh has been starved of food and the strength of the flesh is the availability of food when the flesh is energetic it runs around and plays games but when there is the absence of food it has a way of forcing suppression to your flesh and then your spirit man can hear and understand then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth and your health speedily your health physical health hallelujah only if that our loved ones knew certain truths look at me look at all of us now in this place brothers and sisters look at the knowledge that god has granted us access to imagine what have you had certain revelations and immediately you almost start crying because you wish somebody you love so much think how many times you watch sincere people sincere christians become victims of the oppression of darkness through knowledge shall the just be delivered it takes knowledge to prosper it doesn't just take God to prosper it takes knowledge it takes knowledge to walk in the anointing there must be a desperate desire in your heart and my heart to pant after knowledge to pant after truth 
he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house i know that that place is bethel the place of bread where there is knowledge i'd rather be than to go around celebrating please hear me those who are standing by the roadside and inside all the overflows right where you are standing the difference between you and any man you admire whether in business in ministry in 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 finances family life whatever it is is knowledge when a man fights with his wife and beats his wife it's not just the presence of demons the demons don't just act anyhow the demons take advantage of the ignorance are we together demons don't just act they don't just veto your will and act they take advantage of the gap in knowledge or the incompleteness of your knowledge and then they take advantage of it it is more dangerous to have incomplete knowledge it's better to have complete ignorance because the days of our ignorance god overlooks god can overlook certain things like you see a little child doing certain things and you are aware that that child does not have an ability to have that knowledge at that level and so you forbear if a small child comes and is rolling here now and playing around we may just guide the child in love but not to flog the child because at that level we expect that to happen but if as an adult you come and you are doing it we will first find out whether it's the holy ghost making you do it and if we find out it's not the one we will send you away and we say no 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 you don't do this there is order in the house of god are we together mm. if you say you have been born again that you are in christ you have access to the spirit of god then certain things should be seen in your life that validates the fact that you are walking with the word that validates the fact that you are not just reading your bible in the morning just as a ritual to say be a witness you see me doing my devotion today that's not knowledge it can be religion in fact most times it is religion open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things open down my eyes open down my eyes he said call on to me and i will answer and i will show you not tell you show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things great and mighty dimensions of the anointing that you do not know great and mighty dimensions of influence that you do not know let me tell you this anybody in your life you see with sustainable results in any area do not make a mistake of thinking it is luck are we together now there is no luck in this equation when you see a mother train 11 children and for 30 years those children have remained in a way a manner that even shocks you don't just say Kai, madam you are lucky or what kind of anointing is on you no it's not just the anointing god can give you the same anointing on that woman and you won't be able to train one child with it that anointing functions well through knowledge knowledge gives the anointing efficiency knowledge gives the anointing efficiency the anointing does not just work anyhow knowledge gives the anointing efficiency otherwise there would not be need for the renewal of the mind knowledge gives the anointing efficiency you are still anointed but he said let this mind be in you which was in christ jesus hallelujah have you seen a man maybe an old elderly man that didn't have the privilege to go to school didn't have the privilege to learn english but a greatly anointed man you can see that that man utilized less than on a scale of one to ten less than four of that anointing take that same anointing don't change it the same anointing put it on another young man who is more knowledgeable and more vast in scripture that's when you will see the true potential of what that anointing could do that means that old man's lack of knowledge limited the operation of the anointing that's what happened to some of our parents the old people who were prophets they loved god they had dangerous prophetic graces but there was no accurate understanding of the word so the dispensing of their prophetic looks so limited 
but then you take the same prophetic anointing and you put on someone who is mighty in scripture and you see the kind of miracles and deliverances that will come for people knowledge is important in this kingdom you pay for your ignorance it will not be paid for you will pay for it in this kingdom you will pay for your ignorance you will pay for it in sickness you will pay for it in untimely death you will pay for it in lack of joy you will pay for it in sorrow you will pay for it in all kinds of diseases darkness continues to multiply but it takes those who have light light sufficient to keep the kind of results they desire is God speaking to us we are going to pray but the cry is for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge Lord give me knowledge why is our family like this we are 20 in the, the entire family but nobody rises you know I watch how I talk to people many times sometimes here on the queue and then around as I travel and they meet me and communicate certain challenges and in all honesty and with all humility I know what they are doing wrong that is responsible for that and I know what they need to do to get the result and then they say apostle pray for me I know just a touch from you as soon as you touch me everything will go and it is true that they can get some measure of results but ultimately they need to sit down and that spiritual laziness they just say that's why we love the prophetic so much not necessarily because we appreciate it that it's from God it looks like an easy remedy and an alternative to sitting down and knowing God so we love it just tell me this business trip will I make it or not I don't want to hear any story though I don't need to learn how to talk to the people it's not, I just tell me just tell me this lady i'm going to marry is my morning clear is my afternoon clear is my evening clear or whatever it is but sir there are principles to work with women i don't care just tell me god should be able to know our refusal to get knowledge has equated to the strength of satan in our lives he looks mighty because our ignorance gave him the ladder to climb that high are you hearing what i'm saying let me say it again that satan looks mighty in our lives because our ignorance provided the ladder for him to climb and look so mighty but when you get knowledge brothers and sisters in my little life i've seen the power of knowledge when knowledge is correct and it is applied to the letter that's when you will see how cheap satan is savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to say he is mighty to say forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior can move a mountain my God is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave once upon a time I'm looking for him where is he? doctor come I thought he was there do you know once upon a time this gentleman was a naive young gentleman with a desire to become the future of himself is that true he saw an expectation but he was a naive gentleman and all that happened to him in the medical school they didn't change his cloth they didn't change his name they only kept supplying knowledge when the knowledge was enough they took him higher enough they took him higher enough they took him higher one day someone who was a master in that field looked at him and said based on the knowledge you have you deserve a certification to go and practice as a doctor the different as anointed as i am the difference between me and this guy if someone is convulsing i will pray for him 
because I don't know what else to do. Is that true? All I know in my world is that all wickedness and evil is from Satan. And so that's exactly what I'll do. Because that's my knowledge. And I will watch somebody who is sick, having typhoid fever, and I'm shaking around, and here comes. He already knows that this one, if it can be attended to, it does not kill. So while the mother, he says, hey, help my son. The doctor says, all right. Knowledge gives you stability. Stability. Fear is a revelation that there is a gap in knowledge. Panicking over everything. You just hear something on your zing. Hey, they are here again, just like they said, because there's something you do not know. Are we together now? Yes. You can see him stand. And while he's performing whatever he's doing, his whole medical activity, someone else is there watching and, and panicking. And he says, don't worry. And two days, he just prescribes a drug. Oh, are you doing this? Are you coughing? Are you vomiting? Oh, I see. And the person says, help me. Oh. And the person goes to bed and wakes up the next day as if he's a lie. And says, doctor, I'm fine. Knowledge. Knowledge. Is that true? That means there is something you can know that will make you go to bed and wake up the next day in shock and surprise there's something you can know about favor the the i believe that all of these miracle alerts and all of this they are they are a statement i told you that a sign is a miracle with a message in it god is saying this is how easy i can change your life if you believe me you see the people coming to testify they are even shy they are surprised themselves because it's no respecter of persons are we together tonight we are going to pray and i'm going to pray for the sick very fast very fast we can't continue like this tomorrow we may not it's a miracle service but i don't know if we'll have time to pray for the sick because tomorrow god is going to tear the heavens over this place Aye. hallelujah the anointing oil is already I mean, they carried it out. When I saw the jar coming, I said, please come. <laughs> oh, come, oh, come. Together, we will we'll cry and speak every kind of mystery. In it. <laughs> ah! When the woman was saying, there is nothing in my house, the anointing was hearing the conversation and said, so you are ignoring me. You gathered me among non-living things and said, you don't have anything. He said, change the vessel and see what I can do. The anointing was hearing the conversation. Are you not told that you have an anointing that can teach in english when things move huh when things move uh, living things biology everything you said you, you personify things by giving them life and attributes of humans the oil is a dead thing it is the anointing that makes the oil alive the anointing makes anything alive including a rod that was dead are we together so tonight we are going to pray listen to me let me just give you one truth sit down please just one can i talk about sickness for just five minutes look at me what is it with satan and sickness and diseases please listen i know that there may be a number of people sick now trusting god for healing what if i go to the hospital right now don't feel bad not talking against you that's why the power of god is here if they look at me now and doctor diagnoses me and say young man i just found out that there is a heart palpitation or there is a hole in your heart or there is a tumor in your brain correct or there is a fibroid somewhere some kind of malignant growth blocking your tubes or whatever what exactly is satan achieving with this what is it with satan and the bodies of men what is he looking for i will tell you if you don't know this you will not see the need for the healing ministry the healing ministry is not just a validation that a man is anointed there are many other ways to validate that a man is anointed jesus was very ruthless about healing the healing ministry is not just some showmanship of testimony to show that a man is a good evangelist or apostle or prophet or whatever no you see remember our our teaching on the the serpent the seed right the serpent and the woman that satan knows that there is a law 
right is called the law of territory that you can only be allowed to stay in a territory if you have the requisite demands of that territory i give you an instance if i throw you inside water now you may be able to swim but not forever because that is not your habitation of existence so your design was not made that way but if i throw a fish a fish can stay there forever a man can fly in the air but not indefinite he has to come down even if the plane does not spoil something will happen to his health that pressure gradient will affect him eventually are we together now so we now see that on earth as a human being god's system for functioning on earth is that your spirit must have a body that was built before it becomes legal are we together so if there is no body your spirit is an illegal occupant it may not be legal in the realm of the spirit and in other dimensions of the heavens but on the earth your body your spirit must be hosted in a material body god himself respected this law when he was about to come to the earth a body has thou prepared for me not a spirit the spirit is still the real me but a body had to be prepared are we together now and so christ could come into that body mary's womb did not produce the word of god mary's womb produced a coat a physical body children are heritage from the lord but they need a body is that true they need a body so here's what satan knows that for as long as there are many bodies it means that there are many spirits that can be hosted in those bodies that have wills and can choose to serve god and can choose to advance the kingdom are you seeing the conspiracy of darkness in trying to create the system of clothing and the rest as wonderful as they are eventually they are antichrist systems in an attempt to to clone different bodies so that these demons remember the demons we have been talking about i hope you know those demons are still looking for bodies till today so they are coming up with a system to make robots and educate the robots to be so intelligent but without spirit so that a demon spirit can come into it there are films like that you watch them where scientists try to make all kinds of robots then they invoke through a central machine a spirit is not acting that's satan's agenda but meanwhile there is a level of health that your body must assume for your spirit to safely stay there you know your body is a house god said it is a temple demon said it is a house so we know that both god and satan agree that this body is a house are we together now and so satan tries to inflict all kinds of damages there is a damage that can happen to my body it will break the body so much the spirit will be will have to leave we call that death a separation are we together every sickness is the first step towards death every if i am sick i am closer to death being sick than i am alive so the ultimate goal of sickness is not to bring you down so you'll be fine tomorrow the ultimate goal of sickness is to start initiating the process of death in your life in hope that it will continue that's why doctors are a real blessing those who work in the anointing hates doctors we love doctors here we have a lot of them because we realize that it would take more than a man of god this damage that has been done by hell will require people who keep standing because even the doctors themselves believe in miracles they don't talk to the drugs they just administer it the drug itself the system of its operation is a mystery that only god can tell so medicine itself is a miracle if you go to the hospital you attended a miracle service because something in that hospital is beyond the knowledge of the doctor are we together so satan wants to afflict me imagine that i came up now and i'm coughing i'm coughing blood think of what it would do to your faith one two think of what it would do to the to kingdom advance are we together think of what it would do so satan wants it it's a statement god you are not you are not all that you say 
and I'm using your highest creation to mock you. The healing ministry proves the lordship of Jesus in a very significant way. The healing ministry does not just prove the strength of the man of God. It's a testament of the dominion power of God. Doctors understand this. The next time you are injecting somebody, don't just say, are you recovering? Expect something to flow through your contact with that syringe into the person that accelerates the process. So tonight, hear me. If there is any sickness in your body, it's a sign that Satan desires to kill you. It's not a sign that what he, he desires is proof. It is the first stage to begin to deteriorate you. There are people who are sick, but you go to the hospital and they tell you there is nothing wrong. That's Satan for you. A few days ago, a lady brought me, brought me um, a photo of someone. I think she's here just a little boil Ejimi, little boil on the leg and within months this had rotten if if they turn the other leg you see the bones physical bones the flesh had eaten is that a boil is that how you know that boils work another life attaching itself to your body behold i give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy he says and nothing shall by any means hurt you how god anointed jesus of nazareth chapter 10 verse 38 with the holy ghost and with power he went about doing good healing all day that were sick oppressed sickness is an oppression if you accommodated the devil will kill you with that sickness everywhere jesus saw sick people and they were serious enough about their healing think of what happened to the woman with the issue of blood imagine you were the one that married her and she was your wife 12 years of pain watching your wife every day and here comes jesus imagine the woman who had been bound for 18 years imagine what would happen to her family life the healing ministry is an end time ministry it's not for healing evangelists it's not for apostles it's part of the tools that make us demonstrators of the reality of the life and power of god the power of god must be demonstrated upon his highest creation not just plants and animals and tonight in the name of jesus christ i'm trusting the lord that there are people here who will wave goodbye do you know what god is going to do god is going to turn your own body into a volcano and no devil no spirit the same way they leave deserts in peace that's how they will have to walk out of your body in peace hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the reason, King. See that in majesty. an exposition of your area of ignorance lord reveal to me what do i need to know what do i need to know to take me to the next dimension in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere lift your voice and begin to pray 
expose my area of ignorance. 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 Hallelujah. I like you to prophesy to yourself and say every area of my life where Satan has taken advantage of me by the power of knowledge I declare that your victory in that area is broken. Lift your voice and pray. Every area may be your finances may be your spiritual life may be the area of growth may be a ministry every area where Satan has taken Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Father. Open my eyes to the revelations required for the results I desire. Say it again, Father. Open my eyes to the revelation of the truths, the information that are required for the results that I desire. Open your mouth and pray. Every result has a demand. Every result has a light requirement. Every result I desire. There is something I must know. There is something I must do. Hallelujah. One of the benefits, listen to me, of the word of God is that it can be sent on Aaron. He said he sent forth his word like a messenger. And he says his word he led them. Listen carefully. He sent forth his word. He sent it. He didn't speak it. He didn't say he spoke forth. He sent forth his word. I can be talking to you, but I can say, go and help me do something. He sent forth his word and his word he led them and delivered them from all their destruction. Please, let me tell you something. We're just going to pray one prayer and I'm going to pray for the sick. Demons 
are responsible for infirmities don't confuse it are we together now there are families tied down with all kinds of plagues patterns father stroke mother stroke firstborn stroke first lady daughter stroke what kind of devil is that i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and tell the lord what must live your life this night the anointing to make it go is available. This this hallelujah you must believe this you are barren here tonight you must be ready to take in now you don't take in when you meet your husband Meeting your husband gives the baby a body. You take it when the word of God gets to you. Be it unto me. Joseph was not there. Let's, let's agree with God for God's sake tonight. And frustrate certain medical reports that only God, only God can take away. Are we together now? Lord, I'm ready to receive my healing. Open your mouth and Oh, Hallelujah. Now listen. My God, there is such an anointing. I'm going to pray. Just, just for guys, not that sound. Please change all those things. Play the strings for me. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray. You have. I'm going to minister the healing power of Jesus to you. We may take some instant testimonies here. There's no time to call people out. We do that during the miracle services because we want to be thorough on everybody. But scattered across overflow, one, two, three, those online, wherever you are, the healing power of Jesus is able to touch you wherever you are. Are we together? Now I'm going to be praying for you. As I pray for you and the power of God touches you, there are some of you, you will be surprised at what will happen to you right now. While we finish praying, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check yourself. Now listen please, Osha's protocol just coordinate so we don't have people roaming around. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, are we together? I want you to make your way to the front. Let there be people at, at different points, just station, and we'll have a way of receiving some of them here. That you mean you help me? And then we'll see how we can take a few testimonies to disgrace the devil tonight. We may not be able to take all, but tonight we want to give room to the God that can step in and rubbish the works of Satan. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is very, very important. I want to pray for you now. Already people have been healed. Some of you, as you came, you found out. Don't be afraid. I'm going to pray for you. Bring the lady that the angel of the Lord is going to touch outside with a loud shout. Bring her. Just let me do my thing now. I'm ministering by the spirit of prophecy. I'm going to pray for the sick. Please let me have that lady quickly. I want to pray for her. It's a sign that God is giving to pray for the sick. We 
see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear you I see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear it. so let it rain name of Jesus Christ you see God does these things you know that this is a ministry of signs and wonders and God does these things as a message praise the Lord the Lord is setting this lady's family free I see oppression I command that spirit it's time to go let her go in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ and for you I take this that the devil has put in your stomach in the name of Jesus every planting that is not of the Lord in the name of Jesus it leaves now lay one hand where you are trusting God for healing quickly lay one hand where you are trusting God for healing if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest inside and outside please expect a miracle right now expect a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ my God in the name of Jesus Christ I take authority over the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus I command every devil of sickness every devil of sickness come out of their bodies now in the name of Jesus Christ every spirit of infirmity I take authority over you right now. I take authority over you right now. Every spirit of infirmity within this vicinity, I take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity in their lives by covenant, in their lives by disobedience, in their lives by ignorance, I take authority over you right now. Right now I declare be healed in the name of Jesus. I send the healing power of Jesus like a drug into your body I command cleansing right now in the name of Jesus I command healing right now in the name of Jesus I command healing in the name of Jesus something is happening to you a chest condition is being healed right now in the name of Jesus several chest conditions as a matter of fact right now something is leaving your chest you will feel like fire just going like this and you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ I see an eye condition the Lord is healing an eye condition in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing someone with a tooth problem you have your molars like severe pain I don't know if it's like hole in the teeth right now that hole closes now in the name of Jesus I close that hole now in the name of Jesus Christ lower abdominal pain i'm seeing several ladies with lower abdominal pain i'm seeing like fire leaving me to all of those ladies in the name of jesus lower abdominal pain be healed right now be healed right now i'm seeing a lady right from the last three like three weeks you have been bleeding severely whether you're on your menstrual cycle or not severe bleeding right now the power of god is coming upon you coming upon you now coming upon you now and is living completely in the name of jesus christ there is someone you don't hear well with your right ear you don't hear well with your right ear all of a sudden it opens now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ pile there are at least three people i'm seeing with pile I command in the name of Jesus that devil be healed be, be, let them go right now and pile be healed in Jesus name 
now there is a lady don't be embarrassed i'm seeing you are not a nursing mother yet there are discharges on your breast this is something that is is, is a is, is an embarrassing thing the devil has used to mock you the power of god is coming on that lady right now and there is complete healing complete healing i'm seeing someone with a growth in your neck just somewhere here after the prayer you will check it and you will not see that growth again it disappears and leaves in the name of jesus christ if there's anyone in this place on a crutch or on a wheelchair when i finish praying throw that crutch and stand up in the name of the lord jesus christ i decree and declare if there's anyone having any kind of walking aid the moment i finish praying throw it and stand up in the name of jesus every pain on your limbs anyone with pain on your limbs i command healing right now peptic ulcer be healed right now peptic ulcer be healed right now all forms of hepatitis be healed right now be healed right now ssas be healed right now be healed right now if there is anyone here with any growth in your body the devil has planted any lump on your breast your body or any part of your your system in the name of jesus i command that growth to disappear right now i command that growth to disappear right now in the name of jesus there's there's somebody you have i don't know what problem you have with your nose the lord is showing me this is something that has affected your ability to smell it has affected your ability to smell after the prayer you will be surprised everything just leaves right now in jesus name i'm seeing someone with a pain just right here at the arm in the name of jesus christ i command that pain to leave right now i command that pain to leave right now i command that pain to leave right now now don't be embarrassed i'm seeing someone there is like a severe boil around your private area and this boil has an unusual pain you have treated it again and again and again and it will not go in the name of jesus i command healing for you right now i command healing for you right now i command healing for you right now someone had a dream and in the dream they used an object and they hit you with it physically when you got up this side madam you are the one i'm talking about you come let me talk to you because immediately i spoke the lord told me this is a woman come do i know you madam you had a dream is that true and they hit you with yes at, at that time i was pregnant they hit me with something like spear like a spear yes and sir. from that time you've been having that pain yes, till now sir. even the son i gave back to he came out with that pain he came out with that pain too yes madam you came here for koinonia this is where all things are possible all not some all things are possible hold my hands in the name of jesus i bring an end to this oppression in the name of jesus let that devil leave you in the name of jesus christ i'm still praying in the mighty name of jesus i'm seeing um there is somebody just right here at at, at this this point of my leg there is severe pain like muscle pull sometimes it holds on you and you cannot even move the lord is setting you free right now there is somebody your eyes when you look physically it looks like they are putting a rod in front of you like a, a a little object coming out of you are looking but it's like your eyes one of it is beginning to close and it looks like there is a rod or something like that on your eyes this is what i'm seeing i command that eye to be open right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus be healed overflow one be healed overflow two be healed overflow three be healed our family online be healed and in the main auditorium here be healed in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i want you to check yourself now in the next two minutes many of you will be surprised to see what has happened the moment you see that the hand of god has touched you make your way quickly and come and line up here lord you reign and you rule over all celebrate jesus 
unto you we ascribe all the praise keep coming lord you reign and you rule over all unto you we ascribe all the praise lion of judah reign lion of judah reign Jesus a big 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 clap. Hallelujah. Hold on. Please you should join the queue so that we can hurry up quickly. Your name, your testimony, just bring them here quickly so that okay, go ahead. Um, my name is Joy. I'm can we have them up here? Is it possible? Will it take time? Okay, quickly. Just a few minutes. Okay, my name is Joy. I've been having this toothache for months and toothache. Yes, sir. and then when you mentioned the toothache, as in it gives me headache and then that moment I could not feel the headache. Completely. Completely. It's gone right now. Any pain around your tooth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, please. Praise God. My name is Please quickly. I've been healed. I've been yes, someone be confirming that maybe going down past the Alpha. Four years tonight yes. I received my healing. And I stood here for my mom. She's having fibroid. I believe she's healed tonight. In the name of Jesus Jesus. Christ, it never returns to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, please, quickly. Mama, what's your fear? Walk. Any pain? Any pain? Give Jesus praise. Look at this. Look at this. Could not walk well. And the Lord is healing her. In the name of Jesus, perfection perfection of that that area in Jesus name quickly miracles miracles the Lord is doing great miracles that's a sign that everything that has not been corrected in your life tonight my God is correcting it in the name of Jesus hallelujah destiny changer you are the destiny changer will you come and change my destiny my destiny today over your life is broken forever in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you, yes please Apostle, this is partial blindness healed by the hand of the Lord tonight, what happened to him? Uh, last year I had a problem with this uh, your serious eye. pain Okay. and then I went to the hospital eye center in Kaduna the doctor confirmed that I can no longer see with this eye oh, you went to eye center in Kaduna yes. and the doctors confirmed that, that you will not be able to use the eye to see again. Yes. What happened tonight? While the prayer was going on. The eyes open. I, yes. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Close the one you can see with. Close the one you could see with before. Follow me. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Are you sick? Just follow me. Be careful. Can you see me? Follow me. Look at. Completely blind. Could not see with this one. Follow me. If you can see me, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Look at this. Give Jesus praise. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, sir, I prophesy to you that not this is a sign that every other thing that has been closed in your life, my God is opening it right now. In the name of Jesus, give Jesus praise. Go ahead, yes, please. For ever a month, I can't see with these eyes. You can't see very well yes, with these eyes. Yes, then the eyes will be closing and be growing small. My I God. went to Shika, they give me drugs, my HOD prays. Sometimes I cannot even open my eyes. Sometimes if I'm opening water, then when the apostle was like saying, the Lord is turning to somebody's right eye. And instantly if I close my eyes and teaching me, the ease just stop. I really want to bless Completely. the name of the Lord. That devil leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Call down from overflow three. Oh, the lady from overflow three. Your mother, did you call her? You call her. What happened? She is in my healing. Look at this. Where is she? Where is your mother? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. And then what happened? As in, she has a pipe problem. We are going to see Oh, she has pipe. Yeah, we are going to see this hospital. They say there's, there's nothing wrong with her. She's completely wet. And she used, her blow, her blow used to flow every day. Every my day. God, look at this. And you called her right now. She's really completely in the name of Jesus Christ, the God who can leave Zaria to Kano to kill a woman. May he go to everyone's family and bring supernatural healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead, yes, please. Praise God. Sometimes last year, December, I slept one night and I woke up around past one and I was not able to sleep. Because I was having issues with my hair. My hair was my hair started paining me. Then I slept up the following morning. I woke up and my hair started falling off. I couldn't control it. I went to the saloon to make to retouch it and stretch to see. Even at that point, the hair all just went. I had to just cut my hair. And after cutting my hair, my mom prayed because I could I refused to tell her concerning the dream that I had. Because if I should tell her, she would start panicking. So after that, I prayed and I anointed my hair. And after since then, my hair has become stronger and normal. Can you imagine? This is the hair. The hair is falling off. Every devil, in the name of Jesus, the hair of a woman is her glory. I command restoration for your hair. In she Jesus. has had hair problem for some days now. Hair problem? Yes, Which sir. of the ear? My right ear. I've what? been having severe pain. and Severe pain? Yes, and yesterday it shot completely. It shot completely. Yes. And right now it's right open. Now it's open. Put your no hand. Pain. Put your hand here. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! My name is Patricia Daladi. Apostle made mention of the, you have problem with your, one of the sense organs. I was the one, the nose. I couldn't smell. Yeah, you, you said could, could not smell. You couldn't smell. How long? For 13 years now. For how long? 13 years. 13 years. Look she couldn't this. smell. Look at this. And right now, there's perfume on my hands. Can you smell? Look at this. You can smell this now. Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. Hey. My trust is in you. Ladies and gentlemen, this lady could not smell. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Breathe in. Breathe in. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, I release the life and the power of God to your body. It's over forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Go ahead. Very unusual menstrual pain for 10 years. For 10 years. Let me tell you this. We have to pray for our sisters over this demonic thing because it's getting popular and many of our sisters are even believing that's how it will be. It's a wicked spirit. Don't believe it. It is the devil of darkness. And in the name of Jesus, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice that this has been your experience, I pray by the power of the God I serve that from tonight, that experience lives your life forever. When the pain comes, it will paralyze her legs. She won't be able to move. And she had she came here with that same pain. You came here with that same pain. Yes, and right now, what happened to you? I'm okay, I can completely yes, sir. free, yes, sir. free forever in the name of Jesus. Yes, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
she was bathing Christmas day of 2015 water entered her ear and she has not been able to hear well since then but as you prayed her ear popped open that's how you know it's the devil well. that's how you know it's the devil that you are bathing and water enters your ear and then that's the end of it and I've been suffering from typhoid for the past eight years. I came here very weak, but now I'm for the past what? Typhoid for eight years. She came very weak, but now you she's didn't strong. Go to the hospital. I've been going, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. Kai, the devil. Name of Jesus Christ. Let there be perfection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to your ears. Perfection. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Sir? Um, this woman had a dream in December and then she saw uh, somebody in her dream and they told her this is facial cancer and she woke this is up what? facial cancer cancer of the face. of the face is there something like that ah. and then she woke up and began to feel the symptoms of, and the pains of the person she saw in the dream physically physically right now all the pain gone anyone that appeared to anyone in the dream and planted anything in your body Tonight, may it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus. May it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus. May it go back to that devil in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, please. Okay, lift your hands now. I'll pray for you. That's why I took out time to explain this to you. In the name of Jesus, I command the hand of God to come upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that every force of sickness in your body every force of infirmity over your body it lives now and forever in the name of Jesus the strength to push through tonight and pray in the night until tomorrow in the afternoon when we will be breaking I release that strength to you right now in the name of Jesus many of you will have dreams tonight and in those dreams you will see strange victories and you will get up in the morning with a physical manifestation of those victories in the name of Jesus Christ I release those dreams in the realm of the spirit I command that they are captured in your experience tonight in the name of Jesus Christ again I decree and declare a strange grace for favor that between tonight and tomorrow as you come let there be strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ let's share the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, Grant me the discipline.